Okay, I am quite passionate about onboarding new people to Linux, right? And sometimes we need to stop some false narratives. What I'm talking about is that two days ago I published a video uh, concerning Microsoft's new features and some of you guys have gave me a little bit of material to work with. So let's get into it. Here we go. I have highlighted the first one that I liked. If Linux was able to run games as hassle-free as Windows does, there would be a flood of users to Linux. So what's wrong with this statement? Clearly there are some replies already here, including mine, but what it really is wrong with this statement, right? So what does hassle-free mean to you? On Windows, you need to take care of your drivers, right? There are Radeon drivers, I mean usually people are not into Radeon cards and Windows, but if you do pick one you usually have uh, some hassle with those. Uh, if you're on NVIDIA uh, there are a lot less hassle uh, with those drivers, but you do need to maintain them, update them. That, that's one part of the job and everyone takes it pretty like a normal thing to do, right? You you need to update your drivers. So that's one thing to worry about. Uh, the other thing is uh, choose where you're going to install your games from. Usually it's Steam, right? So when you install a game from Steam, it just works, correct? I mean, are you sure that this just works? Do you never tune anything on your system? Have you never encountered a problem where the game has required some system update maybe? Last year ago, at some point, uh, I tried some really old game on Steam. I actually can't remember, but it was uh, some cowboy game, an old one. I, I'm, I don't even remember which DirectX it, it uses, uh, but it, it refused to run. It was made for older Windows and it didn't work on Windows 11. There, there wasn't much I could do about it, because uh, if the game is designed for uh, too old system, it usually just doesn't work on Windows unless GOG, uh, GOG saves it uh, and they usually do some kind of magic trickery uh, with packaging old games uh, uh, as they know best. There was another cute example when uh, Elden Ring launched. It was pretty a uh, stuttery mess on Windows while on Linux it just worked. Uh, I think it was due to some Valve's uh, optimizations for Steam Deck, but nevertheless, it just worked. The reason that people believe that stuff doesn't work uh, on Linux is because it didn't work before, uh, but time ha times have changed uh, and we now have uh, some compatibility layers. Not, I don't want to get into technical details right now in this video, but the fact is that you can just run games on Linux, especially if it's from Steam. I can't give you precise percentage, but in my personal opinion, I think that like 99% of the games uh, simply just work on Linux. Uh, and I'm talking about games other than those for which their developer, developers has uh, have decided that their game is not going to work on Linux. And I'm talking about Fortnite, uh, Destiny and similar games uh, whose anti-cheats have been certified for Linux, uh, but their develop, develop, developers have decided not to enable it on Linux for whatever reason they have uh, felt comfortable with, I suppose. I mean, I can't blame blame them for uh, do, doing their own thing. Uh, it's just that from my perspective, I'm just not gonna uh, care about those games. I'm not going to install them. I'm not going to think about them anymore. They simply do not exist. I mean, if we would have a tiny little pool of games and like 50% of them not working on Linux, that would be a problem. But the, the thing is that we have ton of games, a ton of really good games and not enough time to play all of them. And basically almost all of them 
simply do just work on Linux. And I, I'm telling you this from my Linux gaming perspective. You don't have to believe me. You can ask other people. You can try it yourself. And uh, the hardest part of getting games to run on Linux is basically when those uh, w a few percentages uh, of game games have some uh, trouble running you need to go to proton db and see how other people dealt with it and usually it's just a launch parameter in in steam it takes you like maybe half a minute to copy paste the commands to to steam whether that's a huge deal for you and you don't want to uh, get into it um I imagine that you are a console player in that case and not a PC player because uh, PC gaming has never been flawless and uh, it, it has never just worked. No matter if you're talking about Linux or Windows or whatnot, it, it's just not a thing on PC. So if you are a, an actual real PC gamer, I really don't think that you're going to find it much different uh, on Linux than on Windows in terms of how much effort you need to invest into uh, games to work. Uh, and in some cases, you're going to actually get better performance. In some, in some cases, you will get worse perform performance, but usually it's uh, quite similar in the end. If you need some other launchers like Battle.net uh, and maybe you are playing World of Warcraft, uh, World of Warcraft to developers have always been saying how they are, uh, how they care about Linux users and how they uh, make their, make sure that their game uh, always runs fine on Linux. So uh, you can run that. You can run, run Elder Scrolls Online. You can run a Warframe. I'm just mentioning some MMO, MMOs now, right? Um, you can run uh, Ubisoft Launcher. You you have Heroic Launcher on Linux uh, that can run Epic uh, Games Launcher, GOG uh, Games Launcher. It's all pretty tightly packaged in a way that you just log in and use it. And I know because I tried it. It's really not that big of a deal anymore. I think th Linux is in a pretty superb spot right now. Uh, except those couple of games that simply don't want to work on Linux. Not that they cannot, it's just that their developers have decided that we're not worthy of their games and I can't do nothing about it. So if you are dependent on uh, those couple of games, then yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a problem, but it's not what this guy says here. Uh, hassle-free as Windows does. Uh, in some cases, I think uh, games on Linux work uh, even uh, with less hassle than on Windows. Driver updates, for example, in quite a lot of uh, gaming-oriented Linux distributions, you don't really need to worry about any of those. It's fully automated uh, and it's completely out of your way. Especially if you are a Radeon user, uh, it's, it's pretty seamless. Uh, let's get on with the next interesting comment. Okay, this one is cool. I appreciate your mindset on Windows. I recently started using Linux Mint on my laptop, but for 99% of my computer stuff, I still need Windows. So I asked uh, if uh, a 99% is uh, something he's sure about or not. And he says that he picked an arbitrary percentage to say that the main thing is uh, that he needs Windows uh, because he works in a particular game engine that's known not to run well on Linux. I'm not sure which one do, would that be, uh, but I'm going to trust on his word. Uh, while many games run well on Linux now, there are of course those that do not uh, due to anti-cheat. So this is something that I covered a couple of minutes ago. and. If you are really into those couple of games, if these games are really important to you, then it's not really a conversation, is it, right? So it's not about Linux not uh, being hassle-free for gaming. It's just that you want games that are not possible on Linux because developer decided so, and you would rather use Windows 
uh, in a way that Microsoft serves it uh, in order to play your favorite game. And that's perfectly fine, in my opinion, if that's your choice, because uh, we are living in a free world and your choices do matter. You, it's you who is making this choice, not me. So I'm seriously considering switching to Linux, but I'm in school and I need to use Microsoft Office products. Uh, is this still possible to use Office 365 and Linux? Also, uh, I have to do Teams calls now and then. Can you still use those on Linux? Uh, I haven't seen this comment before uh, uh, doing this recording. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, you can use Teams uh, on Linux because uh, Teams application is available on Linux. I'm not uh, sure what you mean by Office 365 uh, because Office 365 can mean uh, the web um, application or did you mean the locally installed Microsoft tools uh, called Office 365? I mean, it's, um, it's two things that have the same name. So uh, if you're talking about the locally installed application, then no. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it even running in Wine, al although people have done it. Uh, I I'm just not comfortable uh, with uh, reinventing uh, stuff in that manner. I mean, personally, I, I really don't need Microsoft Office in any way. I use LibreOffice uh, because it's better, in my opinion. It's better for my needs. I prefer it. I use it on Windows. I mean, I, I don't use it on Windows anymore, but... I did use it for a long time uh, on Windows and on Linux. It, it serves my needs uh, pretty good. Uh, for the web version, yeah, you will uh, be able to use the web version because web browsers. Okay, this one is a cool one. I'd consider switching to Linux only if I can find IDEs for C, C++, C Sharp, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and for Git. Uh, so I have already replied to this person, uh, but here, here is something that clearly is not uh, being uh, communicated properly uh, to towards potential new users. Uh, Git on Linux. Come on. <laughs> um, yeah, you have it. Yes, you have it. Uh, I'm not a programmer so i cannot really give people advice on which uh id to use for programming but if you know what you are going to do if you know what you need then usually you already know uh, more than i do about what ids uh, are there uh, and which one you prefer and which one is available on linux right so if it's JetBrains. I'm sure that you have already been um, introduced to the fact that it is available for Linux. And uh, if it's something else, then it's up to you to find out if your preferred IDE is available or not. And if you can switch your workflow to something that uh, actually is available on Linux. Uh, also Visual Studio Code and uh, free versions of that one. And I say free in terms of uh, freed from telemetry uh, also exist on Linux. And these are all pretty popular tools. So pick your choice and I'll see you later. Okay, here, here's the guy who kind of got tired uh, of Windows and he's going to, or, or she, I, I can't tell. They're going to try Nobara uh, for gaming. I'm. I mean, I applaud the, this uh, effort and I think uh, they will do good with Nobara. I wish Linux could get itself together better. There is no doubt it's a frustrating mess with something as simple as uninstalling a program being a convoluted mess. Woof. Okay, this is, um, this is a based answer, I think, based reply. So, up, remove minus minus purge name of the package um you can use um okay let me let me fetch this okay here we go kd discover 
Okay, we have VLC package offered here. We can choose from uh, Debian package. We can choose the snap package. We can choose flat pack. Let's go with flat pack. Yeah, sorry, that one is already installed. Um, I guess it's a chance to show the person how to uninstall software. Okay, let's click uninstall. It's uninstalled. Oh my God. Put Adobe ecosystem working in Linux and I will move right away. So this is really contentious topic in the world of Linux and I, I'm not even sure that it's worth any words anymore, but I don't think that Adobe tools are ever going to come to Linux uh, and I'm not even fear mongering or whatever. I mean, if you really, really need those tools, then by all means use them wherever they are available. I mean, work is work. You need to earn money somehow and you need to uh, feed your family or uh, whichever way uh, that it is that you earn your life money. So uh, if it's Adobe tools that are really required in your uh, business life, then be my guest. Uh, if it's not actually Adobe tools that you need, but rather you are maybe used to them, uh, why not use some open source free software? Why not use GIMP? I mean, uh, if it's Photoshop that you need. Uh, I'm not a professional uh, artist or anything in regards to what Photoshop is capable of uh, doing, right? I use GIMP for light image editing. Uh, I delete stuff. I use layers. I um, fix uh, parts of the picture where it, something is not right. Uh, I use effects. I drop shadows. I... Uh, change perspectives of la layers, uh, increase sizes, decrease sizes. Uh, it's all pretty basic usage, uh, in my opinion. And I think most of the users are like that, uh, who claim to be needing Adobe ecosystem. I, I mean, Photoshop in this case. Uh, if you need uh, a video editor, I'm pretty sure the one from Adobe is uh, amazing. Uh, but personally, I have been using Caden Live uh, with great success and it does what I need. So it, it comes down to how capable uh, of the software do you need and whether is it for your hobby or for your work uh, on which your roof above your head depends on. So if it's your actual work, then I'm not getting into it. Then you probably know the best. Uh, and if it's just for hobby, then I see no reason to not to use open source uh, free software. This guy is actually very much correct because uh, it's a chicken and egg problem. If people don't come to Linux, then proprietary software will not follow. Now, whether we want more proprietary software on Linux or not, that's another kind of question. But I think... Uh, although I'm not using too many, I think it's a good thing that proprietary software would consider Linux users because, because it would be easier for them to switch. And then if they would learn the ways of free software, then they will be able to break some other shackles of their own uh, from other proprietary software. This one is a solid topic. Um, to attract Windows users, Linux users must stop the distro wars. Just accept people use different distros. Let's promote a few new user-friendly distros just as a starter. I think we are already doing that. It's just that uh, different Linux users are in a different stages of, um, how would I put it, uh, advanced n knowledge so to speak. So I think the beginner friendly distributions are long forgotten by some Linux, by some long uh, time Linux users. And they might have uh, flocked to some really complex distributions, which grant them like unlimited uh, customization powers. And they forget that new users don't actually want necessarily to learn stuff. 
uh, in the beginning. They want stuff to just work. And this is one of the reasons why I still recommend Ubuntu because I really think, uh, although it's, uh, it's not a community project, uh, but it comes from Canonical, I really believe that it's a good, solid product for a completely new user. Whether you will continue to use it afterwards or switch to something else, I'm totally not getting into that. But when you arrive on Linux and when you see something like Ubuntu, just magically works uh, and installs all your drivers and you get it with some starting uh, set of software and there's n there is nothing to tune. It's... Um, pretty good feeling and also if you recommend a distribution like that to your friends you have less technical support to do for them so that's another plus Red Hat Enterprise Linux is objectively the worst and I'm just ex assuming here but given the cringe red fedora you are a hell guy aren't you so the title of this video is something related to Microsoft and you're saying that Red Hat Enterprise Linux is objectively the worst. The worst in what? The worst in servers? Compared to which other operating system? The worst in desktop? Compared to which other distributions or operating si systems? I mean what are we actually talking about here? A thin foil might suit better than a red hat. Okay, so the, these two answers are pretty similar uh, in my mind. Um, I'm not going to answer that. See you in the next video.